Ah, the 1980s. The decade that introduced music videos, yuppies and overblown toy commercials masquerading as cartoons. And it's from this era of excess that many 30-somethings nostalgia circuits resonate the most. Hey what's going on folks, my name's Grey, this is Consultronics. And today I'm taking a look at one of the biggest successes across comics and syndicated TV of the time, G.I. Joe. The original Doll for Boys really hit his stride with young audiences the world over at this time, and like many of its contemporaries, hasn't really left, being dragged kicking and screaming from the small screen to its ultimate destiny in a bland and lifeless Hollywood reimagining. But what a lot of people don't know is that there were in fact video games back in the day, before the big screen butchery. And in this video I not only show off the Konami Arcade from 1992, that was one of the many licensed games they did which never left the arcades, but also this. Action Force, an original computer game that never left the UK. This 1987 Commodore 64 game from Virgin. Yes, Virgin. Mr. Branson's had his finger in the video game pie since way back then. Now, it would be grossly unfair of me to compare a Japanese arcade game to an earlier 64K British home computer game. But that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, first things first, why the different names in the US and UK? Well, let me dispel the urban myths and conspiracy theories that have been flying around on the internet. The reason why G.I. Joe, a real American hero, became Action Force international heroes here in the UK wasn't because, like some have speculated, that we wouldn't have known what a G.I. was. In fact, the exact opposite is true. In the 70s and 80s, war comics like Battle and Warlord were massive. Even sci-fi comics such as 2000 AD had future war strips. The reason for the name change is actually rather more mundane. Action Force was already a popular action figure line by British company Palitoy, who Hasbro, rather than compete with, simply bought them out and released all their G.I. Joe toys under the Action Force label which already had an established fan base. Now I'm sure the history of 80s animation is fascinating to you all, but what are the games actually like I hear you ask? Is it worth buying a Commodore 64 just to play it? Oh well, let's see. I never had a C64 growing up, so it's slightly more difficult for me to roll back the years and actually find enjoyment from this game. But if you have the patience to stick with it, it is a very playable action-adventure game that's sure to tickle the nostalgia muscles of any long-term fan of the show or comics. Hey, wasn't Baroness supposed to be from Eastern Europe or something in this show? Anyhow, is the Konami arcade game on par with their other licensed titles from this era, when Konami were a prolific arcade manufacturer? Well, it's one of those weird guide the crosshair run and gun games which should be familiar to anyone who played Cabal or Dynamite Duke on the Mega Drive, or even The Punisher on NES. It's not bad, but certainly not a game I'd go out of my way to recommend to hardcore shoot 'em up fans. But if you remember Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, Destro, Flint and Lady J, then there is definitely something in this forgotten arcade curiosity, and another reason, if one was needed, why MAME should be a fixture in any serious gamer's repertoire. My name is Grey, thanks for watching, I'm going to have more, some more videos up very soon.